Nodes are points, so if you have to draw a line to a specific point, let's say you brought data in uh, from a civil engineering data collector and you've gotten a series of points and you need to draw the contour lines from those points, you'll use the node tool. Quadrant, that's 0, 90, 180, 70 on a circle, so that one is um, pretty well set. Intersection and extension. The intersection is the intersection between two points. Extension means that it's that the actual line as we draw it will extend beyond um, where my current drawing is, which is fine. I want it to extend. I want to see where the projection is going. Insertion. This is for text or blocks, and blocks are just other drawings used, or excuse me, are drawings that we can utilize in other drawings. Perpendicular, I turn perpendicular on because that's another fantastic tool to use when you're trying to create drawings. You're looking for that line to be perpendicular at 90 degrees. It guarantees a little bit better structure. Tangent, as we mentioned, the tangent option gives you the ability to line up linear objects to circular objects so they just touch. Uh, there's a pop-up method that's a little bit easier. Nearest, very misunderstood very overused. I don't check it off initially. Nearest allows you to select an object starting on an object, but not necessarily at an endpoint or midpoint. could be anywhere in that object's uh, space. Apparent intersection. If two objects will cross somewhere, anywhere, whether it's on your screen or off your screen, it will find that intersection location for you. So it's great if you're doing projections and you need to project uh, two linear objects to see where they project to. It's a great tool to use for that. Parallel, there's way better tools for parallel um, for, uh, than to select this parallel option. We'll choose OK. We're now done with three setup items. Our fourth setup item is layers. Now the layer setup allows us to compartmentalize our drawing. We have a, on the ribbon we have a layer area and we have a layer properties. The layer properties button allows us to create or brings up a dialog which allows us to create additional layers. Wow, I've got two layers already and I haven't done a thing. Now you may only have one layer. You may not have the second layer. Layer 0 is the standard operating layer that automatically shows up. If you start drawing in AutoCAD without setting up layers, everything's put on one layer. It makes it harder for you to actually edit your drawing later. The, the visual that I give is when you go to the grocery store, you don't pack your whole cart of groceries in one shopping bag. You compartmentalize the groceries into cold items, dairy, meat, um, box goods, so forth, depending upon where they may go in your house or what special handling needs to occur. Same thing happens here when you're working in AutoCAD. We want to set up compartmentalized areas for object lines, for center lines, for hidden lines. Or if you're doing architecture, it's based on the structure, cabinets, windows, doors, fire protection systems. You want to be able to compartmentalize these items as best you can to make it easy to edit and change later. The def points is automatically created when you apply a dimension. So earlier I was testing and I created a dimension, hence the def points automatically is created. Can't delete it, don't delete it, just leave it where it is. It stands for definition points of dimensions which are basically at the ends of the extension lines. There are little dots that occur at the end of the extension lines. We're going to go ahead and create a layer. All I did was pick the new layer button. There is new layer with freeze um, and when you do that it freezes viewports and viewports is a little bit more complex environment when you're doing projections from 3D objects. And so for most of our drawings in our class we're not even going to worry about the viewport uh, environment for projections, so we're just going to use the very first button to create a layer. 
If we need to delete a layer, we got the X to delete a layer. If you want to set a layer to the current uh, setting, you use the green check. Right now the green check shows that zero is our current layer. So when we choose new layer, it sets up as layer one. We're going to go ahead and call this object for object lines. We'll hit another one and we'll call that center for center lines. And we'll hit a third one for dimension lines. And if you don't want to type in the full word dimension, just type in dim, D-I-M. Just as long as you know and your reader knows what that layer structure is. When we deal with layers, we have a lot of options. The first option is a light bulb. And so when you walk into a, a room without windows and you flip the light switch on, the light comes on and you can see. And that's when you get the bright light bulb. If I select a light bulb, it'll turn that light bulb off. And so if you're in a room and the lights go out, you can't see. Doesn't mean that the object isn't there, you just can't see it. And that's exactly what happens with layers. We also have the second one, which is a sunshine. And if you were to click on the sunshine, you get a snowflake. So that's freeze and thaw. When you freeze a layer, put it into snowflake mode there, what happens is it's very similar to on and off, but it doesn't recalculate. Now what does that mean by recalculating? It's not like your GPS, uh, where your GPS will say that it's recalculating. This was created way back in the mid-1980s. I say way back, it's you know 20 years ago, 25 years ago. When AutoCAD first came out, the software was so powerful that the current computers couldn't run it efficiently. So what happened was is that AutoCAD uh, would actually slow down the actual computer. I know it's really hard to conceptualize that now, but theoretically you could draw an AutoCAD and have to wait for the computer to catch up to you. Whereas today you don't have that problem. But freeze can be used for other things. And the idea behind freeze, or the way that it was used uh, back then, was you'd create a section of your drawing, you'd then freeze it. So it wouldn't recalculate it as part of an update later. And then you would draw another section, freeze it. And when you were finished with the whole drawing, then you would unfreeze all the areas that you froze, and you would have a complete drawing. It was very uh, cumbersome to manage it. Today, freeze allows you to um, draw variations. So if I have uh, plan A and plan B for an interior design layout, I can freeze plan A while I'm working on plan B. I can then freeze plan B when I'm printing plan A and vice versa. So it gives me some flexibility. Be aware that when you freeze, an out, freeze a layer, everything on the layer is automatically turned off regardless of whether the light bulb is on or not it's turned off if the snowflake is there the third column is lock this is a fantastic tool what it allows you to do is create a geometry on a layer and lock it which means that you can't change it until you unlock it and then you're able to modify and change it so let's say we're doing an architectural layout I want the second floor of my residence to make sure that the uh, load-bearing walls line up between the first and the second floors. So I want to make sure that I draw the first floor, lock it, and then I can draw the second floor based on the load-bearing wall positions of the first floor. And I don't accidentally move a wall by accident on the first floor. So it's a great tool to use where you want to create an object, lock it, make sure that it's visible on the screen, because the difference between freeze and thaw and lock and unlock is the visibility of the objects. Freeze and fall, thaw turns it off, lock and unlock leaves it on. The color kind of gets squished there. It's a box, all the colors are white. If I click on it, it brings up a color window, and I can select 256 colors. If that's not enough, you can go to 16.7 million with true color, or you can actually go to color books 
if you need to have a specific Pantone style color applied to your drawing. So if you're doing a graphic arts uh, project, you want to use the Pantone colors because that guarantees the look and look and the colorization. However, for most users, the 256 colors is by far enough. I'm going to go ahead and use a purple style color for my dimensions. Um, the primary colors are across the bottom here. Those are the basic primary colors. Or you can choose any, any color that you, you would like from the palette. Line types. There's different styles of lines that you can use in AutoCAD. The default is continuous lines. That's a solid line type. Let me go ahead and choose the center line layer and come across to the line type and select the appropriate one for that. Because dimensions are going to be continuous lines. We're not going to change the line type on a dimension. However, center lines, that's something totally different. But you notice that center lines are not listed, so I need to load the line type. When we get to line types, the basic line type setting is continuous. And if you notice, we want to work on the center line uh, layer. We want to make sure that we load the additional line type. The concept here is that when we create a line type uh, or select a line type, we don't necessarily want to choose the ACAD ISO. That one is set to be 25.4 times larger than what you need. What you do want to use is the ones that actually you can read, the ones in this case that have center. And you'll notice that there's three different types. So the center is the default or the basic one. Center 2 is half the original scale, so you have more dashes. And center X2 is two times. Here's the general rule of thumb. On 8.5 by 11 and 11 by 17 size drawings, where the objects are around that size, you want to use center 2. If you get a little bit larger than that, let's say 18 by 24 inches, you want to use center. Then when it gets larger than that, you want to use X, X2, or two times the size. Or if, it, if it's like a house, it's going, to be a, it's going to be based on the actual plotting scale. And so you're going to set a line type scale uh, for that to occur. So we'll choose center 2 as our basis for our center line. We'll choose center 2 again. This will load it. So the first one we selected to load it into our um, object select, or excuse me, our line type selection. And now the second selection is going to actually apply it to the layer itself. So you can see that it now pops up. Line weights. Line weights allow you to get, produce a thicker line. So object lines get a line weight of about 0.5. Think about it. When you, when you buy a mechanical pencil, they come in different lead widths, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. And if you look at the mechanical pencil, they're all in millimeters. So the same thing occurs here on the line weight. The reason why they're not in inches, even though we started with an inch-based drawing, is that because your pencil line weights are typically metric. So we're going to choose a 0.5 line weight for our basis on the object line. So you can see that it does make a difference when it will print. It'll print it a little bit bolder. Level of transparency. We're not going to provide any transparency um, or plotting. And the last one here, um, the plotting one, this happens a, more than you would think. Even though it's off to the side and you typically don't see it, what happens is if I click on plot and I get the no plot symbol here, even though it'll show up on the screen, it won't plot out in a drawing. So it won't physically print out. So you could actually have production notes on a drawing that you're creating for your own use. And then you don't want to plot that out on the production notes. So you can make that a non-plotting layer. Works out really well for a scenario like that. Okay, here's the leap of faith. Notice that there's no close button on this dialog box. Once you set these up, and let's go ahead and do a quick uh, green color for center lines, and then object lines we can leave white, or if you want to make it a light color, you want to make sure it's a light color that you can use. I'm going to leave mine white today. 
You have to hit the X, the close button in the upper left-hand corner.